Are you guys ready for the word of God? It's going to be good today. We're in a series called Encounters with Jesus. And uh, today we're going to talk on a topic of living water, Jesus. Living water, Jesus. And we're going to answer the question later on in this message. What is living water that he offers us? And um, I, I believe we're going to grow from that. Last week, we talked about 10 lepers. And I assumed that they were 10 men. But my wife corrected me after the service. She said, you were talking like they were all men. Some of them could have been women. So I had to go and check my Bible. And it doesn't say who they were. So possibly there were women there too. <laughs> but anyway, these 10 lepers, probably um, women and men, were searching, seeking, and looking for Jesus who could heal them. And obviously, he performed a beautiful, awesome uh, miracle that changed their life. Today, we're going to look at somebody who Jesus also encounters. And uh, this person did not look for him. Did not want him, did not search for him. It was God who was searching for her. We're talking about woman at the well. And I love this story about the woman at the well. I, I think I teach on this story um, every other year. And let me just tell you how frustrating it is that although I've been preaching on it so much, I still don't get to the end of it. <laughs> it's like there's more, the more I preach about it, the more I see about it. And it's like, God, when am I going to just like be done with this scripture? He says, probably never, because as you grow, you will see more and more in it. Uh, this conversation, this encounter that Jesus had with a woman at the well, Samaritan woman, is the longest recorded conversation with anybody that Jesus had. You would think the longest conversation recorded would be with Nicodemus or with Peter or James or John. And obviously Jesus had long conversation with those guys, but we do not have it recorded. We have the longest conversation that Jesus record, that the Gospels record is Jesus and this woman at the well. So I want us to read today's scripture in John chapter 4, verse 4. And we're just going to read a few verses. And here's what it says. He, Jesus, had to go through Samaria on the way now Jesus ministered in three regions one of them he was not really allowed to go to but he still kind of went into he was ministering in Judea he was ministering in Samaria and he was ministering in Galilee okay in order to go from Judea to Galilee he had to go through Samaria often Jews would take a long route so they wouldn't have to associate themselves with Samaritans. Jews did not think highly of Samaritans. They called them hybrids or half-breeds because Samaritans were Jews who were mixed with Assyrians and all other nations. Um, Samaritans are people who didn't just worship the God of the Bible, which they kind of did, but they also worshiped other gods, and that's why Jews didn't like them. Okay, so there was this... Uh, not racial per se, but nationalistic kind of a divide between those two. And we see here what's happening. Eventually, he came to Samaritan village of Sikar near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jesus did. Um, next verse. Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired from a long walk. Notice he's tired from a long walk, set wearily besides the well about noontime so he's tired he's been traveling all morning probably and before the heat of the day doing most of their traveling so jesus sits there and soon a samaritan woman i would like to call this woman if i can um samantha of samaria okay is that cool sam of samaria okay let's just uh, anybody here samantha okay you know a samantha Okay. <laughs> Soon a Samaritan woman, Samantha of Samaria, came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone. Can I tell you in that culture, men were not supposed to talk to a woman alone. Yes, yeah, especially a rabbi. 
But he's reaching out, he's breaking the barrier, cultural barrier, and uh, sexual barrier, uh, not sexual barrier, but uh, social. social and gender yeah. barrier. Yeah. And he is associating with her. Imagine you see your pastor, me, in a restaurant somewhere talking to a woman, Samantha of Samaria. It wouldn't look good. <laughs> Call Tanya. <laughs> Take a photo. Call Tanya. <laughs> and Alex is on the street. <laughs> he was alone at that time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. And even Jesus, although he's God and perfect, still did not one on one associate with women. Did you know that? Because when his disciples came back and found him talking, they, the Bible says they were shocked because he was talking to a woman, even Jesus himself. But this one time, appointed by God, it's a divine appointment. He's sitting there and he's talking to her. Woman was surprised. She's surprised as much as the disciples were. Uh, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? What are your motives? Why are you talking to me? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of God for you. And who is speaking to you? So basically Jesus is saying, I'm a gift of God to you. This appointment is a gift of God to you. And God himself, the Messiah... The perfect, pure human being and, and God is talking to you. You would ask me and I would give you, and here it is, living water. This conversation is all about the living water. What is it? We'll get there in a second. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where will you get this living water? And besides... Do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will become thirsty, will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I will give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. And we're going to stop here. This is the word of the Lord for us today. Praise be to God. Now, let's dissect this story and let's see what we can learn from it and what Holy Spirit wants us to learn from it. Now, the Bible says Jesus had to go through Samaria. Meaning, God, Jesus is not controlled by circumstances. This is, was not a chance encounter. This is a focused, planned Circumstance. It's a planned situation that God had for this woman. And like I said already, this is the longest encounter Jesus has that is written in the gospel. And she is not a church going woman. She is not a spiritual woman. She's not a religious woman. She's not even a seeker of God. But isn't it awesome that it's not just that we are so good that we were seeking God. It was that God was looking for us. Her reputation. Can we talk about her reputation? She's not very popular in town. Why? Because Jesus exposes just a little later that she has had five husbands. And now the guy she's living with is not her husband. She's checking up with another man. So obviously women of that town probably like to gossip about her. That's why she came during the hottest part of, well, part of the hardest noon part of the day to draw the water all by herself. She didn't want to see anybody. She didn't want to talk with anybody. She didn't want to get the glances, the looks of anybody. She was probably often gossiped about. She was kind of, can I just tell you, she, she's kind of a Kim Kardashian of that town. <laughs> now, some of you are like, well, Kim Kardashian is popular. 
Yeah, in our culture, because we're kind of perverted. <laughs> but in that culture, can I tell you, to have five husbands and another guy in that culture is like, you have to be super pretty. So I assume that she's very, she's the 1%. She's the model type. That's why, because men usually in that culture would not marry a divorced woman. Everybody wanted a non-divorced woman. <laughs> but notice this woman has so many men coming after her, tells me that she's very wanted and she's very desirable as far as her looks go. But after being with her, so they, they love her for her beauty. But for some reason... Later, they divorce her, maybe for her character. I don't know. <laughs> I used to look at this woman as a sinful woman um, more than others, but I kind of changed my mind a little bit. Because did you know that in Jewish culture, a woman could not divorce her husband? So who divorced who? Who left who? The man that married her for her looks probably just as fast divorce her after they got to know her or whatever and how do you divorce a woman in a Jewish culture the Bible kind of gives us a glimpse and some rabbinical teachings give us a glimpse and here's how you do it you write her a letter of divorce then you go in a square town square where there's lots of people on some day on Sabbath and you hold this letter and you say I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times. And you give the woman a letter. And that's it. From that day on, she has to leave your house and she leaves with nothing. So you call her a sinner. I like to call those men who divorced her just as much involved, just as much responsible as she is. But nevertheless, now she's living with a sixth guy and she's living in sin. Obviously, the Bible calls it sin when you're not married. Uh, we know that, right, church? No, it's not a sin anymore. We've changed. We've evolved. The Bible calls it still sin. So I know you, CNN probably says it's not. Your college professor says it's not. But the Bible still says it is. So we're going to go by the Bible today. Just today, okay? Well, and tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. And, and, so, and so she's beautiful, uh, but she is broken. Because how many of you know, when you've been abandoned so many times, you can't help but have that, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? And so the more they abandon her, the more she wants their love. The, the more she worships love, the more she worships men, and the more she worships relationship, that, that relationship. And billions of people, millions of people of that time wanted, maybe even holy men, have prayed for a conversation with Jesus. And they didn't get it. But look who God goes after. God preordained this before the foundation of time. He's going after a woman like Samantha of Samaria, of Sikar. That's her town. He will leave the 99. He will leave the holy man, it says, right? He will leave the, the healthy and he will go after the sick. That's the kind of God we served and never forget that. Sometimes we Christians, we forget. We think God is all about us. But God will leave a holy man and he will go after a bad reputation woman or a man until he seeks them and he finds them. And notice he walks over the nationalistic barriers between that, although she doesn't. He's walking. Can I tell you that Jesus broke barriers between people? Although people not necessarily did it back. Notice her response is, why are you talking to me? Why are you talking to me? You don't like us? Fine. We don't like you either. Don't talk to me. He's asking her for water. He says, she says, no, you don't have nothing. And why are you asking me? So she's giving him a hard time. But notice he doesn't say, who needs you? I'm God. 
you should die in your sin, you know? No, he keeps pushing and gently going to the source of her problem, and that's worship. She's worshiping something. She's seeking something, and that something does not satisfy. She's going after man, after man, after man, after love, 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 and the love never satisfies because she's going after a secondary thing that only could be filled, that first thing that could only be filled by God. For some divine reason, preordained by God, she got a privilege of a lifetime to meet the Son of God, Messiah, face to face while on the earth. And she was not even seeking Him. Maybe you're here today and you're not even seeking God. Can I tell you? God has a way to break through your barriers. God has a way to get to you. Why? Because He loves you. He created you. He foreknew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you were going to be here. He knew this woman. And later what she become was beautiful. And I'll show it to you in a second. The second point here is that Jesus is tired and weary. We've all used an excuse. Why didn't you talk to that person God has brought into your path? I was tired. Come on, somebody. I just didn't have time. I was too busy. Jesus is tired and weary as well. But notice... He doesn't let that stop him. He pursues a woman who's actually resistant to him. He skillfully starts a conversation about something small like water. Like water. Because he wants to find a common ground, something to spring from. He's seeking her salvation. Have you noticed later in this story, Jesus said the Father is seeking worshipers who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. She was the one, here's the clue, that the Father was seeking that day. You are the one that God is seeking today. Don't just say, I'm sitting here. No, God is going after your mind. God is going after your heart. Maybe you came here because your parents forced you. Nevertheless, God is seeking worshipers. If you don't worship God, you will worship human. And look what's happening to our culture because we worship humans. We worship politics and Politics is fine. We worship, but some people exchange God for politicians. Now politicians is their God. Some people exchange God for science. And can I tell you, I love science, but science is not God. Science is the, the study of the things God made. And so our society is in danger. And if you look at previous superpowers and societies, when they removed God, that was the sign of their downfall. And before long, they were destroyed. They started worshiping idols. And human beings self-destruct when we worship idols, when our nation begins to worship something other than God. We begin. That's the sign we're self-destructing. And she was worshiping something too. And God, and, and Jesus says, I, I want to, I want to. Father is seeking you to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's when everything aligns in your life. That's when everything aligns in her life as well. God is seeking her worship. He's also seeking your worship today as well. Do yourself a favor. Listen, do yourself a favor. Worship God, not yourself. Do yourself a favor. Worship God, not money, not material things, not love. Don't worship love. Worship the God who is love. Don't worship. Every Sunday, you should be realigning. It's like on your, on your uh, car periodically you have to realign your tires rebalance your tires every Sunday a believer has to rebalance his life and here's what we we're doing we're putting God at the highest place of our being and then everything else 
That's what we do on Sunday. We don't come to listen to me. We come to realign ourselves and get right with God again. Because in this world, yeah, because in this world, we, we have a tendency to go a little more to the, too much to the left or a little bit too much to the right, and then we fall into the ditch. Either side, we fall into the ditch. God wants her worship because it benefits her. It's good for her. Remember I said, do yourself a favor and worship God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Worship idols, and they will destroy you. Every time. Every time. But Jesus is tired and weary. But God has an encounter with him. And so he pushes through. He probably just ministered to thousands of people. He's tired, but he still finds a moment in time for this woman that the culture rejects, but God loves the culture rejected her. Her town rejected her. Man rejected her. Maybe even her parents rejected her. Religion rejected her. Priests rejected her. But God loves her. But God loves her. Samantha is not looking for God. God is looking for Samantha. Samantha. And Jesus takes the water, regular water, and he turns that into a spiritual water. And he says, he who drinks the water I give, the living water I give, will never thirst again. What is that water, living water? What is it? And here it is. Living water is the love of God. Some of you will say living water is salvation. No, salvation is the byproduct of the love of God. Some of you are like, no, it's joy. No, joy, it comes after you drink the living water. Okay? Some of you say, my sins will be forgiven. That's what he's given you. No, 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 no. Sins is a byproduct. It's the, it's the next step. Redemption. You know, all these big words. Um, justification and, and stuff. But what is the living water? It's simple, guys. Never forget this. It's the love of God being poured out into us. For it is the loving kindness of God that leads us to what? Repentance. Right. See, you first get the loving kindness. You drink of this love of God. And then you can't live in sin anymore. How could you? When you've been changed. Notice all her life she's seeking. She has an itch. And she's looking to fulfill it in man. Maybe you have an itch. Maybe you have that deep yearning deep desire you want something more and you can go from man to man to man and they will disappoint you can go from cake to chocolate cake and eventually even that will disappoint you can go to substances and you can go to pornography and those things will give you temporary maybe relief but in big scheme of things they disappoint and it's frustrating when you're seeking something and you can't find it it's frustrating it's frustrating and so Jesus said to her I want to give you something that you will not thirst again let me tell you this since I've drank that living water since the moment I have never went out looking for another God my soul is satisfying. For those of you who are happily married, once you found that spouse, how many of you can say, I, I'm done searching. I'm no longer on Tinder. I'm no longer on Farmer's Love or whatever it's called. Um, uh, sure, whatever. I, uh, you know, there's all kinds of these uh, uh, places where you, 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 I haven't, can I tell you that I haven't looked online for another woman because I've been happily married. Same thing with the job. Let's say with the job. You're always searching, never find, but then you found something and then you're like, this is it. I'm never going to search again. Because searching is frustrating sometimes. 
you, you always hear people changing jobs. And, and I understand when you have a job, it's, it's, I don't think you can ever be satisfied having a job. Can I just be honest? When you have a business, it's a different story. But when you have a job, it's, it's hard to be working for somebody else. It, for those of you who are working for a boss, you will never be completely satisfied. I don't, I don't think it's even possible because, uh, anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. That's, that's a different subject. But uh, he says, I can, yeah, <laughs> I can give you living water. And what is her response? I can give you a gift of living water. I can give you a gift of the love of God. Right. Samantha probably thought that God hated her. Would you agree? She probably believed that she was the worst sinner. And here, this man says, I am the Messiah. I'm he. And he shows her this love. And so, what does she say? What was her response? Give me this water, living water. Does she understand what it is? No. Did you understand what salvation was when you got saved? Do you understand what love of God is? Especially on the day that you receive it? Nobody does. It's like buying a computer and you've never used the computer. You don't even know what, what it can do. So you look at it like, what is it? It's a, like a little box or something, you know? But if you start playing with it, it has so many capabilities, right? Same thing. She didn't know what she was getting. And none of us know exactly what God is going to give us when we become saved. But by faith, can I tell you, we receive everything in one moment. Listen to me. When I was saved, I didn't know what I know today. 20 years ago, some... 25 years ago, I got saved. I didn't know what I know today. It is by faith we understand that the worlds were created by the Word of God. How does it work? How does DNA work? I don't know. But it's by faith I already know it all. I know it before I understand it. How do you know Jesus is the Lord? I can't explain to you. I just, I just know. See, you don't have to understand everything because God is too big. Try understanding cosmos. Try understanding space and everything, how it all works. It'll take you lifetimes. But we know it's there. And by faith, and here's what she does. She drinks when she says, give me this water. She feels the love and she responds. She drinks the love of God. And it creates, what is that word, Pastor Andre? Synergetic. Synergetic. Synthesis, reaction. Synthesis reaction. Listen to me. It's deep. It's, it's when, see, if, if God loved her before he met her. But nothing happened. But when she met him and responded. Right. Synth, what is that word again? Synth synthesis, reaction. synthesis reaction happens. Synthesis reaction happens in your soul and in your spirit. When the two become one, they create something new together listen to me <laughs> suddenly a woman like this springs up like this how do I know suddenly a burst of energy and hope comes in into her life and it was by faith believing that he's the Messiah that her love united with 
his love and there was a combustion synergy of some sort imagine a man loves a woman but the woman doesn't love him imagine that right huh? is there a lot of chemistry there a lot of combustion a lot of love no not so much but what, what, what happens the moment remember those of you who were who are married now remember that moment when it's like we love each other I love you you love me what happens explosions fireworks reaction energy like you've never felt before suddenly maybe you were a little depressed maybe your life was kind of whatever but now that both of you love each other and both of you know this something else happens and that's what happens when a person encounters God and drinks of this spiritual living water that Jesus offers it creates something in their spirit let me just give you a, an example in Africa and I've never been but they I've watched many videos and video after video after video so I know about Africa <laughs> I watched movie after movie <laughs> so I know but many months out of a year the Africa Serengeti and stuff it's it's all desert right it's all dead and dry and then rain comes in and what happens suddenly within days and hours the desert comes alive suddenly the birds fly in suddenly the bugs fly in suddenly the fish come back suddenly everything starts growing and animals start coming in and there's life in the desert and that's what Ezekiel writes he says there was a river flowing from the temple from the from the Ark of the Covenant it was flowing and everything it touched became alive God wants to turn graves into gardens God wants to take your dead spirit and dead soul that is searching for things that are meaningless sometimes and he wants to turn it into garden God wants to make you alive again and so Jesus offered her one thing and he's offering you one thing today is that living water when you drink it you will not thirst again David says as the deer thirsts for water my soul thirsts after you thirsty for God you function best when you are filled with the living water of God with the love of God and so here's what happens when the loves combine God's love and her by faith new burst of energy happens number two liberation from constant seeking happens your soul is constantly searching for God that's why people who have not found forgiveness and satisfaction in Jesus Christ constantly go from new book to new guru to new religion they try different religions right why because they're still searching they're still searching new self-help book maybe this book will help me maybe this new age will give me answers maybe some spirituality maybe Kabbalah maybe uh, Scientology maybe whatever will give me the answers I'm looking for Jesus said but once you drink of this water I'm an example and I if I could use myself I, I, I could say I've never been looking for another God I am so filled and my thirst is so satisfied with the God that I love and the God who loves me as much as he loves Jesus I love life and when it gets hard I just know that in the end the best is yet to come by faith I understand that God has created and prepared a place for me it's not even like if what no it's by faith I know everything you need it for this life has already been downloaded into you at the moment that you drink 
from that cup of living water that Jesus can only offer. Everything. You've been seated at the right hand of the Father. All the spiritual blessings have been given to you. All of it has been downloaded into you. It will take you a lifetime of unpacking. Oh, what God has done. Hallelujah. Are we running out of time? Are you guys enjoying this? And so, liberation from constant seeking happens. It's a good feeling when you've been in a dating scene for too long. You just want to settle down and you just want to stop seeking, right? When you've been looking for a job, you just want to like find that job or career that you're going to do and, and then just live your life. Move on to something else. Number three, her worship changes. From man, from relationships, from worshiping love, to worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. The worst thing we can do is force on a man who has not drank living water to try to worship God in spirit and in truth. The worst thing parents we can do is without uh, leading our children to drink from the living water is forcing them to behave in some moral way. Because an ungenerated man could not receive of the things of God. And so Jesus goes right for that. The bullseye, the heart of things. And he says, drink this water, and then you'll understand. See, some people are like this. I want to understand before I believe. Can I just, with all due respect, your puny mind cannot understand God. My, same with me, my puny mind does not understand God. We only can say like a woman at the well, okay, give me that water so I don't thirst again. Today, The only thing you could say, God, give me. Or if you're a believer, God, keep giving me that water. Let it bubble up in me. Let it constantly, the love of God, bubble up in me. That's what makes you want to change. That's what makes you want to be better, be moral. That's what makes you want to do good. That living water in your spirit. Because works without faith is self-gratification. If I'm honest, why do people build hospitals so they can go on TV and tell how much they've done? Why do people feed the poor and then bring a video camera with them so they can show everybody on social media how good they are? Works without faith. But when you drink this water, it's different now. I do this for God. Whether people see or don't, and actually sometimes they have to see because Jesus says, so they may see your good works. Glorify your Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. So her worship changes. Do you remember Leah and Jacob? Remember? Jacob was a cheat, it was a conniver, liar. He um, lied his father to his father to steal the blessing from his older brother Esau. When he goes and he lives in a far distant, away from his family, never to see his mom again. And uh, he wants to marry this beautiful woman named Rachel, a younger daughter. Well, on the day of marriage, his father-in-law tricks him just like he tricked his father. All right? He tricks him and gives him Leah. Leah, the Bible says, is not a looker. Rachel was. It's biblical, come on. Rachel was. I'm talking the Bible here, please. Um, The Bible says about Rachel that she was beautiful in face and form. Leah, she said she couldn't even see. It's in the Bible, people. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, Leah, 
his oldest probably lived in a shadow of her older, beautiful, a younger, beautiful sister, Rachel. Everybody wanted Rachel. And in the morning after the wedding, Jacob was probably drunk. And uh, he consummated his marriage to Leah. He's mad. He runs to the father-in-law. Says, what have you done? And then probably the Holy Spirit reminded him exactly what you have done to your father. And lied to him. And so Jacob's just like, oh. You know, how can you accuse somebody of something you did? <laughs> and so now they're married. And uh, Leah, who he's married to, says... Jacob will love me. I'll give him a son. So she conceives and she gives a son and, and Jacob doesn't love her. She has another son and says and names him. He will, Jacob will love me. Nothing happens. Jacob doesn't love. He's still in love with Rachel. The more Leah tries to get love, the more he wants nothing to do with her. She conceives and have another boy and finally she says, she names him, I think Judah, right? which means praise. And in this birth, she doesn't even mention Jacob. He says, she says, the Lord heard me and answered me and my heart will praise God. She was going after Jacob while God was working on her heart. And I think the same, this woman, Samantha, was going after man to fulfill her desires. And then God came in. And man went on the place that they should be. Just man. <laughs> you don't worship man. You worship God. And the last thing is she was filled with purpose. New purpose. How do I know? She runs back to her small town and she starts evangelizing that same hour. A woman who was shy, maybe who was culturally rejected, doesn't care. Who says what? She's screaming at the top of her lungs. Come see this guy who told me everything. Could he be the Messiah? Go and look for themselves. And then the whole town comes to him and invites him for two days to minister to Samaritans for two days. And many in that town believe First because of a woman, but then because they met him. So God, when you drink that living water, he gives you a new purpose. First she was living for something low energy like man. <laughs> and now she's living something eternal like God. Have you drank from the living, the well of the living water? Have you invited Jesus Christ into your life. Drinking means inviting Him into your life. Today I want to give you that opportunity. Would you close your eyes and bow your head? I want to ask you, have you drank from that well? If not, God, through my lips, is calling you to Himself. God, through my voice, is calling you. He says, I, I'm a gift. I'm the greatest gift the world has ever had. And I'm offering you, myself, I'm offering you this living water. In Joshua, it says, this day you choose who you will serve. This day, today, you choose. Will you serve yourself? Or will you serve your creator, God? And so on a count of three, if that's you, if you want to say, I want to drink from this well of living water, I want to invite, I'm asking Jesus to give me that water. On a count of three, would you raise your hand and raise it high? I'm not going to invite you to the front, but right where you are, it's your personal decision. Would you raise your hand? He loves you and he's offering you himself, the love of God. Don't reject him this morning. So on a count of three, raise your hand and raise it high. One, two, three. Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Thank you. Come on. Let's celebrate. Come on, the whole church. Celebrate 
14 people. I want you to keep your eyes closed and say this. Jesus, give me that living water now so I will not thirst. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. From this moment on, I declare you my Lord and my Savior. From this moment on, by faith, I believe that I am saved. I am forgiven. And I'm a child of God for eternity and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands and let's celebrate. Woo! Thanks for tuning in to New Life Sermon Series Online. If you're blessed by these messages and are interested in helping spread the word of God to others, make an investment today. You can give at newlifechurchsf.org. If you have a story or a testimony to share, let us know on our website as well. We hope you have a blessed day and enjoy today's message by Pastor Alex.